Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi, welcome back to the MOOC NPTEL course on developing soft skills and personality. I am Ravichandran, I am with you for uh, this course throughout. Uh, I am a professor of English from the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, IIT Kanpur. So, how was the day yesterday? Yesterday I left you with two examples for uh, conflict resolution. Were you able to work out the examples? I suggested that you should be able to working out, coming with solutions based on the uh, tips that I had given. Before I start uh, giving you the solution, let us quickly look at the highlights of the previous lecture. In the previous lecture, I actually uh, told you as how you can resolve conflicts. I also told you that uh, you should not be praying to God that your life should be without any conflicts, rather you should be asking God to give you strength and soft skills to actually resolve the conflicts. Instead of thinking that I will be peaceful if there are no conflicts, you need to think that you should have the ability to sort out these conflicts and only then you will be peaceful. And in doing that, I was telling you that unlike the corporate kind of approach, I suggested always aim at a win-win approach. Now to aim at a win-win approach, I also told you that try to look at both sides. Now, in any conflict, there are two sides and there is also a third side and sometimes more than three sides. Now, you should be able to look at the things out of the box which the partners who are involved in uh, conflicts are not able to see. And at the same time, you should always give contingency to the third option that is possible. Uh, I also talked to you about the conflict resolution skills in general and the process that you should be using if you want to resolve any conflicts. In that context, again I gave you two conflict situations, two small anecdotes, one conflict that happened between husband and wife, the other one that happened between father and son. Uh, I hope you remember that uh, in order to solve the conflicts, some of the points that I told you like you should choose a conducive environment, you should try to do brainstorming, you should get the facts first before actually uh, trying to sort out this thing, you should go for active listening, you should focus on the problem not the person, you should try to diffuse, manage anger. Uh, if they are angry, you should actually try to make them feel cool before you actually start negotiating with them. You should avoid communication blockers, you should use your empathy skills. If you are part of the conflict, you should empathize with the other person and then you should try to go for cognitive restructuring. You should try to restructure the entire thing through a logical and perceptual manner. Uh, giving contingency to the fact that there will be perceptional errors and you try to point out to the concerned person like how uh, the perceptional thing can be restructured in such a manner that they try to see the reality, they try to understand the truth. And then you should negotiate the outcomes with them and then you try to choose a solution that is working for everybody that is favorable to all. Now, I gave you two situations. The first one, uh, is between a husband and a wife and uh, again both are examples for uh, interpersonal conflicts between two people and in both these cases we call them as affective conflicts that means the emotional conflicts which are very risky and then very uh, dangerous to deal with but if you do not deal with that they can explode like time bomb and then cause uh, complete damage to the relationship, so much so that you will not be able to bridge it after that. Now, in the both cases that I gave, uh, the first one still, uh, between the husband and the wife, you know that they are a very loving couple and then the conflict has started. How did you work out the conflicts? I told you to look at this and then come out with some uh, suggestions, some solutions. Uh, did you try to analyze that and then try to use the suggestions process that I told you and then how would you have stopped uh, this couple from being getting divorced? Did you think of that? Now, if I were to do, I would have started like this, but before uh, 
telling you my uh, step by step method in which I would have started uh, working out the process of resolving the conflict. I want you to uh, have in mind one interesting and important idea. So, that was uh, discussed by Betton Russell, although it is not an essay on conflict resolution, but there is a very interesting anecdote that he shares with us, which actually tells us how you can pin down any conflicts and then resolve it very easily. Betton Russell, interestingly, if you know, uh, he is the uh, person who is a renowned philosopher, mathematician, he fought for uh, peace, but he also got uh, married thrice and then he got uh, divorced thrice and in the fourth time when he got married he also wrote this uh, famous book Marriage and Morals and incidentally he won the Nobel Prize for Literature. Now, uh, such a dynamic personality who has undergone so many conflicts and then who is full of knowledge and wisdom and uh, uh, it is worth reading the entire essay knowledge and wisdom if, if you want to develop your uh, soft skills towards uh, resolving conflicts. But at this stage, I will just focus on one part, one episode, one anecdote that he talks about. So, let me just uh, uh, briefly narrate that for you and then uh, uh, I want you to apply the same thing to the two cases that I have discussed or any such case that you will come across in life. Look at this, he says, consider the case of two men. So, he does not want to name them, he says Mr. A and Mr. B, who hate each other and through mutual hatred bring each other to destruction. Suppose you go to Mr. A and say, why do you hate Mr. B? He will no doubt give you an appalling list of, appalling list of Mr. B's vices. So, all bad things about uh, Mr. B, A will be giving you a list. Now, Russell says it is partly true, but partly false. You might also know that because we always try to look at the faults of others and we tend to exaggerate them overlooking our own faults. So, he says that now suppose you go to Mr. B, he will give you an exactly similar list of Mr. A's vices with an equal admixture of truth and falsehood. Okay. So, you have collected two lists, one from A, one from B, but both is not completely true, but then it is completely uh, talking about the voices of the other persons. Now, suppose you now come back to Mr. A and say, you will be surprised to learn that Mr. B says the same things about you as you say about him and you go to Mr. B and make a similar speech. The first effect no doubt will be to increase their mutual hatred. They will initially feel that, oh, he is saying so many bad things about me. So, the hatred increases since each will be so horrified by the other's injustice. How could he say that about me? I am not like that. He is like that. That is the initial response. But perhaps, if you have sufficient patience and sufficient persuasiveness, you may succeed in convincing each that the other has only the normal share of human wickedness and that their enmity is harmful to both. Meaning, all human beings have this good side and the bad side, the vices and then the virtues. So, if you tell them that it is normal that any human being will have this kind of limitations which you have been exaggerating. So, it will be possible for the other person to realize that enmity for both is going to be very harmful and then you will be able to bring harmony in the relationship. This is an interesting tip that he gives about conflict resolution, although as I said he, uh, he does not directly talk about that. And he says, if you can do this, you will have instilled some fragment of wisdom in you, in those people also. Remember, at the end of each conflict resolution, you are becoming wiser and wiser and happier and happier also. Now, go back to the first conflict that I discussed, I suggested that in order to resolve any conflict, uh, if possible, to the extent possible, try to choose a conducive environment. Instead of uh, the place in which where they are fighting, try to take them outside somewhere. So, in this case, since you are the neighbor for uh, Shilpa and Kishore, you invite them to your home 
on a weekend, on a time when they are relaxed or even you create a birthday party for you and then invite them specially. Or if you know that they enjoy going out for a picnic and there is a favorite place that Shilpa wants to go and then uh, Kishore has not been taking her for a long time. So, you just uh, arrange it, convince Kishore to take uh, uh, her with you and then you just go there or you take them to a favorite uh, restaurant where they want to eat good food. Now, select the uh, environment that is favorable for ch such a talk. Now, when you take them there, you need to diffuse or reduce their anger. So, uh, when they when they uh, start talking to each other, sometimes they are likely to blame each other and their anger is likely to flare up. Now, you need to diffuse this. How could you do? You can make them play games. In fact, there are books on conflict resolution games, 100 games, 200 games, but then between uh, uh, two partners or two persons, two loving couples. So, what you can do is, you can make them play the simple game like truth or dare. So, uh, maybe you you have dice or something and then every time somebody's chance comes, either the person has to speak the truth or dare to do something that what the other partners will tell. Now, in this case, actually they will be able to get the truth out from each other whenever their turn comes. You can also give them a team task. For example, you can uh, call somebody else with you to play doubles uh, in a tennis and then you can make them as team partners. Now, this will help them again to cooperate and coordinate so that there is a feeling that they should try to win. Okay. So, this is another thing that you can do. Brainstorming may not work if they are not uh, willing to join in a group and then talk about each other, but then you can get the facts by using the method that is suggested by Russell. You can ask them to make a list of things. Now, in this case, not the uh, not only the things that they hate each other, but you can ask them to list out five things they like in each other and five they dislike. You say that it is compulsory they should mention and if possible you can tell them to prioritize. What is it that you like most in your husband and same thing what is he liking most in Shilpa and vice versa. And then you can also add some common questions to both like why did you marry against opposition? The parents did not want you to get married, but why did you both decided to live together? What made you join together? So, this will help them to think those glorious moments in which they really loved each other. And then you also ask them questions like, why do not you share the problems at job, particularly to Kishore. So, you find out why he is not able to do that, why is he reluctant to explain what is happening to him in the job. Uh, the answers that he will give will be really revelatory to Shilpa because uh, either there is a stress or there is something so annoying that he is feeling that he should not share it with her thinking that it might hurt her so much. Maybe he has performed so badly, maybe he is incurring some loss and then he does not want her to lose confidence in him and it is it's annoying himself, but he does not want to tell it to her. Now, to Shilpa you can ask questions like, what do you do at home? How do you feel in the long absence of Kishore? How do you manage? What like Is it just watching the TV that is sufficient or are you doing something? Are you taking a part time job? Are you doing a course? Are you interested in some hobby? So, these kind of questions like even Kishore might not know what she is doing in his absence. Now, as suggested by Russell, you can exchange the list with their permission, without their permission depending upon the level of uh, trust that is there at the time and then show to each other that look, look at the 5 points. So, that shows that both of you are actually still in love with each other but you are not liking each other because of the recent behavioral changes which have happened maybe due to certain circumstances and then you bring them together and find out what could be the circumstances, what made them lose trust in each other, what made particularly Kishore become uncommunicative. Now, do the active reflective listening, listen to what they have to tell about each other and who triggered the conflict. Now, again here focus on the problem, not the person. Humor has done it first, Shilpa. So, do not join Kishore and say that, oh, it is Shilpa who did it. So, do not blame her and vice versa. If it is Kishore, so do not join her and do not blame him. So, you are not there 
to blame uh, anybody, but you are there to focus on the problem. The problem here is the relationship has reached such a conflict and stress, stressful situation where they have uh, reached up to the level of divorce. Now, how are you going to stop this? So, do not take sides or approve of one sided blames, but then try to show that you are actually a very empathetic person. And uh, uh, before doing that, if they are making some kind of communication blocks, uh, for example, they lose the temper and sh start shouting at each other or when uh, one is talking, the other one says, shut up, you loud mouth, you always speak like this, okay, you never know anything. And then the uh, famous dialogue, you never understand me. Now, these kind of things are actually communication blockers and then that will not let you progress. So, you have to stop them very gently, politely and you have to make them realize that you are there for solution, not for creating problem. Use your empathy skills, use also those skills to make them realize it is important that they also empathize with each other. Make both feel that you are clearly understanding the problems and you are there to help them. Now, Shilpa can empathize with his job stress, whatever it is and Kishore needs to empathize on Shilpa's lonely feeling and then go for cognitive restructuring. Now, you can restructure the entire episode of conflict that you can just tell them slowly once they are uh, uh, trusting you, tell them like how they started stopping uh, uh, with each other. It might have triggered on one small trivial thing. Now, you can make that into a game like situation and then you can ask them their suggestions to identify more triggers and you can even ask them how if you are re really loving and if you are willing to forgive and forget this thing, how would I, how you would have changed this point. So, at this point you lost your temper, you got angry, but if you did not get angry, so how you would have sorted out this situation. And finally, you negotiate the outcomes with them. Now, discuss with them the outcomes of separation. It is not going to benefit both. Kishore stress, job stress will make him much more miserable. And in case of uh, Shilpa, if she cannot live with somebody who loved her and then left the family and came there and then joined her and then made her feel very happy in a very metropolitan kind of environment, he was all for her and then leaving him and finding a different person, new person again is going to create lot of conflict and stress in her life. So, make her understand this. So, you can also highlight the benefits of living together. You also try to recall some of the incidents in which you can show them some of uh, uh, the video clips that you might be having when they were attending some of the parties. So, you can show them how nice and how uh, lovable it was for you to look at them, how friendly and how considerate were they and how all the time they were left to themselves. What happened? What went wrong? Why did they change? So, recall those things and then make them realize, okay, uh, they are really uh, trustworthy and then they are really loving each other, but something in between has actually caused this friction. Now, remove that. Now, finally, try to choose a solution that works for everybody. Some solutions could be temporary, some solutions could be permanent. Now, temporary solution, if you are not able to resolve it even at that moment, you make Shilpa go to her friends or parents home for some time, like temporary separation. If she keeps insisting on divorce, temporary separation, that itself will solve the problem. Make Kishore take a break from job and make him spend more time with her. The other option is help them plan for travel together. So, you just uh, make him take leave, make Shilpa uh, get rid of all her household activities, make them go somewhere a, to a resort or a, a different place which they have never traveled together, where they will spend time together. And then uh, finally, you just uh, try to make them realize that they need to decide to help each other and then they have to live together. Maybe you can also suggest that they can plan for a baby. It is high time that uh, they plan for a baby because all the uh, conflicts can be resolved when they look at the baby and then they will learn to become more tolerant, more patient and they will learn to uh, give each other. So, this is the way you can uh, sort of sort out the conflict between uh, uh, especially people who are in intimate relationship 
but uh, they are in a kind of conflicting situation where they would have actually caused complete damage to the relationship. Now, a similar situation is happening with regard to the interpersonal conflict between the father and the son. So, already you know the background. So, the dialogue is between going to uh, a summer trip and then the father is not allowing him to do. Now, here I just want you to analyze this from a different point of view like seeing in a dialogue what is triggering, what is that conflicting time and what is that break point, how is it happening and then if you are able to realize that you will control if you are one of the persons involved in the conflict using such kind of language. Now, look at this, dad you promised me, okay. so the first thing is there is, is putting uh, emphasis that he promised. Now, between emotional relationships, it is important that you should remain trustworthy. If you make a promise, you fulfill it, even if it is a very small promise, like I will give you a chocolate if you pass in this exam, you need to give it. You cannot say that, oh, you passed it, now let us see next time. Now, that will disappoint the child. So, he promised, but then father says, yeah, I promised if you get 10 point CPI. Now, uh, dad is insisting that, okay, I will follow my promise provided that, the, uh, provided that you might have got this uh, expected marks. Now, he says I got 9.6 and then slowly you see up to here it is not triggering, but then it is like when he says, but it does not make it 10 kid. So, even the word kid is slightly provocative here in this context, although he might not have intended it that way. Instead of saying, uh, it, it does not make it 10 dear, my dear son, it is not 10, but then saying this, it is like indicating that, oh, you immature boy, so you do not know what you are saying, it is like that. And then son, next he is, it is a very small mild provocative, but then the son uh, gets provoked further, he says, you are so mean dad, okay, mean. So, he has already accused his daddy. Now, the father says, so mean to your loser. Now, he took the accusation and he started blaming him. He says, you are the loser and to your loser, why should I follow my promise? And then I will keep my promise if you have made yours and if you have become a winner. And then the next worst thing that he is doing is that he is trying to compare him. He says that, look at Aditya, he has secured 10 point throughout. Now, the father should never compare the kid with the other one, which damage he has done, he is just making a comparison. But then the son is also trying to compare at his level, him with the other father, he says, but his dad loves him and always supports him. Look at the word, loves, always supports. So, these are positive ones, but then here he is saying that by implication, you are not loving me, you are not uh, supporting me and you are not always like that. And then the next damaging word he says, you hate me, hate. Again another accusation, another emotionally loaded word. Now, another comparison he is making, he says, you love only your daughter. Now, this another worst uh, thing that he is accusing him for indiscriminative uh, way of showing love to his own children and then he says, not me. Now, the father is feeling that it is injustice after all to what he has been doing. He says, that is unfair after all, I have done for you, implying that I have done so much for you. I used all my savings to pay the fees for your college. You, now the most offensive remark that he is giving, ungrateful dog. Okay, ungrateful itself is uh, worst, but then he is using the abusive word also, dog. And then the next final trigger, he gets angry, is not able to control his emotion. In the anger, impulsively he slaps him. So, not only getting angry, but also slapping him. Now, the son, since he is somewhat submissive, he starts crying. Okay. Now, this is again an emotional outburst. And then he makes the other damaging remark, he says, you will never understand me that, never understand, never. And then again he continues to say, I hate you. I am leaving home right now. 
I am leaving home right now and is about to go. I said, now if you are the mother, how will you stop this guy and then how will you do this? Now, choosing a conducive environment here, so you can take them to separate rooms and talk to them separately or you take them together to uh, a favorite place like a temple or a mall where you can sit uh, at a uh, different place, calm place and then talk to each other. Now, brainstorming, you can sit together and then tell that, okay, look, for daddy, it will not be possible for him to take you to somewhere abroad this time because he is in a financial crunch. That is fact. And then you try to tell them that this is the situation. If you want, you can see his bank balance. But he can take you to some other place. Let us think about it. And then from your side, let us see how you can improve on this situation. Do you need a tuition? for a particular subject where you have lost marks. Now, this is brainstorming, trying to gather more ideas and getting the facts, know who said what, like you are not there in the situation. So, you can tell them, probably you should not have said this, so that it is triggered his anger and probably you should have also avoided saying this. So, listen to both without being prejudiced. Focus on the problem, like take the kid for a trip, that is the problem. So, the son wants to go for a trip that is the problem. Now, father has aggravated the situation because of his own uh, uh, expected uh, wishes and sometimes it uh, uh, like you need to find out why he got angry. Is it just because that uh, uh, his son is not able to perform or is there something inside him? Is he hoping that some of his unfulfilled dreams or the ones that his son will be able to actualize? Is he trying to correlate that? Just try to find out. And then diffuse, manage the anger just by showing your love, showing your concern by uh, giving them good food, maybe uh, giving them a pat, giving them a hug and then avoid communication blockers like not let them blame each other anymore. Use the empathy skills, make them know that you feel the pain at the same time, uh, make them realize that they should also not uh, start hurting each other like this. Now, in the cognitive restructuring, tell them how better the situation could have been avoided, how by stopping the comparison first of all and then telling the father like when he started comparing with the other kid and then insisting on the CPA, telling him that 9.6 and 10, it is not so big a difference, it is almost close. So, you can make him realize that it is not a big difference and you could actually forgive your kid for that and then try to keep the promise. But if financial thing is an issue, so that is a separate problem. So, do not combine that with this. And then you can also make him realize that is getting marks more important than your son's well-being? If he is psychologically affected, if he feels so let out, if he feels depressed, if he even thinks of committing suicide, if he thinks of running away from the home and if he completely loses your control. So, how are you going to get back his love and affection to you? Now, negotiating the outcomes, you can go out somewhere, you can stay at home, but you can also uh, tell them that maybe we will not be able to go to somewhere abroad, but we can go to some very beautiful places in India. We can go to Ladakh for example, we can spend some time. So, that much money is there with the daddy and even if daddy is not having the money, I have some savings, I will use it for uh, this trip. Let us all go together. Choosing a solution that works for everybody. Now, you have to make the son realize that living at the home with proper understanding is more important than staying outside. Now, going out, you have to tell him that it is like impulsive reaction, but you have to make him realize that it is not that easy. And then make them feel genuinely sorry to each other and then whether they say sorry or they hug each other, so it is going to end in a kind of win-win situation. You can also recollect some of the interesting episodes, anecdotes that might have happened in the uh, childhood stage. You can tell the son, like you can tell, uh, look son, how possessive you were with your father. You always used to uh, sleep on his uh, lap or you sleep on his chest and then you never let your daughter even go and sit uh, 
uh, on his other lap. So, you were always so possessive and even anybody said anything about your dad, you used to feel bad about it. Now, how could you say this to your dad? And the same thing you can also tell the father like, how could you do this? You are so affectionate and so happy when he was born and then you are all the time spending your time. Now, recalling these things, making them realize that, okay, uh, there was uh, love and then it should not go away uh, because of this trivial situation, will again uh, bring them back to win-win situation. Remember, uh, before I end this, when you give a win-win solution, so, there is an intense feeling of mutual respect. At the end of it, in both cases, they should respect much more than how they uh, respected before. And love should grow deeper with every conflict resolved. So, that should be the motto that you should have. At the end of it, the intensity of the relationship should grow, but it should not diminish. So, if you are able to work it out, either as a mediator or if you are part of the conflicts, both way it is uh, fine. Now, this is about interpersonal relationships. Now, I will come out with more uh, suggestions in the next lecture. I hope you uh, also try to work it out the way I suggested. In case you have better solutions, better suggestions, you can share it in the forum and let us know about it. Thank you for uh, watching this video and then uh, let me wish you a very uh, conflict free uh, day for at least today. Thank you.